Hi, this is Brian Fogarty, and this is a video for Chapter 13 of the book Quantitative Social Science Data with R, 2nd edition. So in this video we're going to do is we are going to plot predicted probabilities. In the previous video we looked at how to um, calculate and very briefly <laughs> interpret uh, individual and grouped predicted probabilities. Here we're going to plot them. Um, I think plotting predict probabilities is, is probably the best way to do this if it's possible. So what we want here is we want a variable um, from our from our regression. Um, we want a variable that's statistically significant that we can include on the x-axis. And that variable we want it to have a number of uh, values just because we'll see this, but just because we, then we're, we'd be able to get this nice, smooth, predicted probability line. Um, if we have just nominal level variables or dummy variables, we can't do a, a line like we'll see, but we can do kind of point estimates of it. It's not as exciting, but it's, it's still possible to plot them. Um, and there's different ways, there's different options to do that. Uh, but here we're just, we're, we're going to, um, we're going to do two plots. The first one, we're just going to do it with a single variable. And then the second one, we're going to combine it with two different variables. All right. So the first one we're going to do is do a predictive probability plot for our, um, our, our variable Scott, which is again, Scottish identification, strength of Scottish identification. And how we do this is we are going to com combine the ggpredict function that we used for calculating predict probabilities. We're going to combine it with ggplot um, functions. So uh, let's get to it. So it's all stuff we, for the most part, have seen. I'm going to look at a couple things I, I don't think we have seen, but it shouldn't be that surprising or different. All right, so we're going to do ggpredict. All right, to get the, the this is how we're going to get the the predicted probability. So we're going to do gg predict um, model dot logit. This is from earlier our saved logit model results, and then terms equals quote Scott. Okay, um, let's do something real quick. Let's take a look at the names that are saved from gg predict. Or the names that would be saved. I mean, they are saved, but they would be saved. Okay, so this tells us um, x, which is referring to this terms variable here, um, predicted. So those are predicted probabilities, standard error, confidence, low, confidence, high. That's the confidence interval of the predictions, uh, which we'll see in the in the plot. We we can consider these actually prediction intervals, and then group, which is actually I don't think that's used here, but we'll we'll see that in a minute. All right. Knowing this will make the ggplot code potentially make more sense. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the names here. Okay, so we have this. We're going to use piping to connect it to ggplot code. So we have ggplot, and we're going to do mapping equals AES. We're going to have x equals x. <laughs> Sounds like like a spy movie or something. Um, again, that's referring to now that we saw the names. That's referring to Scott. All right. So the plot Scottish identity is going to be on the x-axis, and then y equals predicted. Those are our predicted probabilities. Okay. Now now uh, let's dress this up some. We're going to do plus. We're going to use geom smooth. That will give us a line, and we're going to say SE equals false. So make the standard errors, which are going to show up as confidence slash prediction intervals uh, here in this way. Um, actually, no, it's standard error. So this is from the um, the model itself. Um, so we're going to set those to false because we're going to use a different function called geom ribbon. And we're going to use this to include the prediction intervals. This comes from the, the conf, uh, confidence low, confidence high, or conf. That's a weird word. Just to, I could say con, but conf. Conf low, conf high. 
Um, all right, so we're going to do as and then y min equals conf low. So y min, so this is the the bottom of the the prediction interval, the ribbon, the bottom of the the geome ribbon. As you might imagine, we're going to do y max equals conf high and then move outside that first close and then we're going to do alpha equals 0.2. So if you remember back from chapter 8, um, alpha lightens uh, the darkness. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, that sounded crazy. Like <laughs> I, I lighten the darkness. No, it, it, it lightens the shade um, so that it's, <clears throat> excuse me, so that it's um, not as dark on the plot. All right, then we're going to do plus, and we're going to set the um, the look of the x-axis by doing uh, scale x continuous and then limits equals and then the c function concatenate 1 to 7 so we set it 1 to 7 so the plot will be 1 to 7 and then <clears throat> excuse me we'll do breaks equals and then c concatenate 1 through 7 all right so there's going to be a little dash at each one of the x-axis. So we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, and then since we went through all this trouble, uh, let's add some labels. So we're going to do labs and then um, title equals predicted. I know it's a lot of typing, um, but once we do it once, we can kind of steal a lot of it. Predicted probability of voting yes again yes on the scottish independence um oh inside that close parenthesis i'm going to do comma and then x equals strength of scottish identity and then y we're going to name as predicted probability Okay, so then, then we close it, and then we're going to use um, theme minimal, just so that it looks a little nicer. Okay, so we put that all together. Let's run this and take a look. I think it's all right, but we'll find out. Okay, so we get this thing saying, it's just telling us what it's using. Um, this geom smoke smooth method so low it so that's anyway it's just what it's using <laughs> all right i'm gonna pop this out and drag the window okay so th this is the predicted probability line um for scottish um identity so you know looking at this what's you know what's cool about this is it shows the curvilinear nature of probabilities um you know, if, if we do this and we get a, a line that looks linear, we probably did something wrong because it's not often the case that probability is linear. All right. But we can clearly see that as the strength of Scottish identity increases, the predicted probability of voting yes um, also increases. Uh, what, one brief comment is that because we didn't specify the other variables they're set at their means okay all right so that's you know that's pretty pretty cool i think um but what's what i find kind of cool is plotting multiple lines or combination of variables and so what we're going to do is plot um sort of replicate what we just did but we're going to add in trust so it's almost like an interaction, if you will. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not technically an interaction. Don't, don't, do, don't come up with that. But um, we're going to add in line. So, so the line is not the strength of Scottish identity. We're going to have four lines for each level of trust. And the, their, how they curve, how they change, is going to be based on the value of the strength of Scottish identity. Okay, 
So we're going to do, again, gg predict, right? I copied and pasted in. Always a good idea. And do uh, terms equals and then the c function concatenate, right? Scott, comma, quote, trust. And then what we need to do is we need to change, do a little uh, data wrangling here on our trust variable. All right. So we have our um, piping. We're going to do mutate and then group equals. Okay. So group, if you remember from earlier in the video here, when we looked at the names, we had this group. Group here is corresponding to the trust values or levels. So what we're going to do is we're going to do group equals. We're going to do ordered. All right as underscore factor group so what what that does is that it converts group which again is the levels of trust into a factor variable and then it orders them all right so right now it's one two three four which is um which is which is ordered but we're going to add labels to them. And so by default, uh, the, the labels would be, would be set up or ordered alphabetically, but by including this ordered function, we, we can order it in the way we want. Okay. So, so we're going to do group equals recode. Wait, do we have that car package still loaded? Uh oh. Hold on. I think we might have the car package still loaded. No. Okay. We need to double check. It's not loaded. Good. Uh, again, the car package has a uh, recode function, exact same name. So, so if we had it loaded um, and didn't reload tidyverse, then the car package version would be the active version. Okay. So we're all good there. We're going to recode group. And then comma, I'm going to pull this back a little, and then we're going to add labels. So right now it's one, two, three, four. We're going to do uh, one. We need those dashes so that it can differentiate. So it's differentiated from a number. So one equals never, comma, two, oh, <laughs> two equals sometimes. I'm doing abbreviation, or not abbreviation somewhat abbreviations just because this is going to show up on our legend and we don't want really long names here um three equals usually four equals always all right so those are the, the labels that are being attached to trust which is showing up in this data as group all right so we close that is that the right i'm getting this error here one two yep that's right and do space and do piping okay so then we go down to our gg plot why is this dude still here go away do i need a double oh i need that's why see that was a good time to, to look at that we need a double closed um right because Mutate is not part of ggpredict. It's a separate function. Got it. All right. Come down here. This is from before. We have mapping. We have x and y predicted. Okay. We are going to include color equals group and fill equals group. Now, we, we need both of these because we're doing predicted probability line as well as the prediction intervals. So we need to do it twice so that both of those are corresponding to our trust variable and that colors show up. All right, um, geome smooth SE equals false, just like before. Um, I included in the chapter this option size. We're just gonna make the line slightly bigger just so they show up a little more clearly. All right. Um, geome ribbon, let's see, 
this is all the same, but we're going to get rid of one of the colors here. Um, that will get rid of, <clears throat> excuse me, the the default um, line that goes on on the on the ribbon, the prediction intervals. So that's that's all that does. Okay. Let's see, what else do we want to do? All right, so that's it, that looks good. The x-axis is the same as before. These labels are the same as before, but we are going to include some um, titles for uh, the legend, um, which is part of guide. So we have guide, then, um, color equals guide legend and then title equals I'm going to abbreviate it here uh, G-O-V-T -G for government trust and then we'll do comma and then I'm going to steal this let's steal this we're going to do it for fill because we need again, we need both of them because we have the lines and the prediction intervals. That's why we're doing both. So we have fill. All right, that looks good. All right, this is closed. We're going to do plus. Bring that back up. We have theme minimal. And then we're going to, um, instead of default, we're going to use a, a different. Um, so it's not a technically a palette, but it's essentially a palette of uh, colors here. Um, from I don't even know how to pronounce this. Veritas, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, I have just found these are nice default colors instead of um, playing around with all different kinds of palettes and stuff like that. I, I found this these versions work really well for different combinations um of of plots you're doing okay so we have we have to do it twice we have to do we have to do it for fill we have to do it for color it doesn't matter the order um doesn't really matter okay veritas we need it we're using it for for um underscore d and if i remember correctly i think the d is for discrete don't quote me on that um, but I think that's what we need. Okay, Th this is a big chunk of code. <laughs> there's no way around it, and there's multiple places we could have messed up. So the first time we're doing this, we might want to do it in phases, right? Um, where we, we kind of do different parts and just check, like, okay, what's wrong here? before we just try to do everything, because sometimes it's difficult to figure out, like, where is the mistake? Okay, let's highlight this and run it, and we have a problem, right? I knew there was a problem. I felt it in my bones. Got it. Is not guide, it is guides. I think that's, yeah, could not find function guide. All right. Again, sometimes the errors, the information they give you is informative, sometimes it's not. Okay, so we didn't get an error there. Let's click on this. Oh, this why is so much bigger. Okay, so now what we have is, again, on the x-axis, we have strength of Scottish identity. But then we have four lines. These lines correspond to the different levels of government trusts. Okay, so the purple line here is never, the bluish is sometimes, the greenish is usually, and the yellow is always. Um, so I talk a lot, or I have a bunch in, in, in the chapter on how to interpret these. Um, generally, there's, there's two things we should look at. One is, you know, kind of like, what is the overall picture as strength of Scottish identity increases. Uh, so here we see that for all levels of trust, as Sc the strength of Scottish identity increases, the predictive probability of voting yes increases. 
Um, and then, and then we can get into the individual ones, right? So we can say like people who, um, never trusts the British government have the highest predicted probability of voting yes, uh, as we increase on the strength of Scottish identity or, right, you could say like, regardless of the strength, um, you know, and, and kind of talk about the other ones as well. Sometimes these, these might cross, you know, depending on our, the variables we have, uh, but these are kind of nice parallel ones. Um, the ribbon here, right, these are our prediction intervals. So these aren't, these are not confidence intervals in the same way that we have when we are looking at um, the regression results and we're trying to figure out, you know, um, what is statistically or statistically significant or not. These are prediction intervals. So it's saying the prediction could be somewhere in here. So don't get too hung up. Sometimes, you know, what we might want to do if it, if, if these look really messy, we might just want to get rid of them because it can confuse people and get people to be like, your stuff's not statistically significant. Look at these. And it's like, no, that's not what's showing. Okay. So that is it for, um, this video. This is, this is the last one on binary outcome models, but not the last one in the chapter. The next, the next video will be looking at ordered outcome regression models. All right, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.